Farmers started using GMOs in 1996 in Canada, and what was mentioned previously, and I told you why they, what they were told. And after, within, even after the first year, things started going exactly the opposite. The yields went down drastically. Uh, the nutritional value, maybe only 50% of conventional or organic uh, crops. But worst of all, a massive increased use of chemicals. Three to five times more chemical use than ever, ever before. And as, as you saw before, because of the new super weeds that had developed. But the super weeds didn't only develop uh, because of the, um, of the increased use of chemicals. They developed because Monsanto was not the only company that was selling GMOs back in 1996. There was two other varieties, Liberty, Liberty Link and Pursuit Smart. And through, and through cross-pollination, the genes from three companies or four companies through cross-pollination were going into the, Monsanto, or the one GMO crop. So now you had three GMO genes in one crop taking a new powerful chemical to try and control this new super weed. Um, what did the companies three or four years ago say about the new super weed and how to control and kill it? They said, now we will come out with a new super chemical, and that is exactly the words they used. And what is this new super chemical? First of all, Monsanto's new Roundup, herbicide Roundup, is four times stronger than it was in 1996. And the surfactum that they have added lately to it makes it one of the most toxic chemicals now on the face of the earth. Uh, secondly, one of the, some of the other companies said they will come out with a new type of 2,4-D, which is primarily used on the western plains, or northern plains and the prairies of western Canada on broadleaf weeds. And that new 2,4-D ester is, now contains 70% Agent Orange. This is what we're using on the prairies now to control this new super weed. So less chemic, uh, more chemicals now, more toxic chemicals, less yields and less nutritious. This is what happened to us with the introduction of GMOs. We have seen no benefit from it. Now, how will we feed a hungry world when we have less yields and more chemical use? GMOs were never ever meant for increased yields. It was meant to get total control over farmers on the seed supply and then also the food supply. That's what GMOs really meant. The other issue, that I really would like to talk to you this afternoon that arises if you ever introduce GMOs. And that is the whole issue of control over people, consumers, but especially farmers. And I will show to you this afternoon the other side of GMOs. I have a document in my hand, and it's a document from Monsanto, and it's their contract. And I'll just give briefly to you this afternoon some of the clauses in that contract. Number one, a farmer must only buy, use Monsanto seeds. You only can use Monsanto's chemicals. You must pay Monsanto a $15 an acre license fee on each acre that you own each year. Uh, another clause is that you must permit Monsanto's police force or investigators to come on your land for three years after you sign this contract, even though you may only grow the crop one year. And Monsanto's gene police, as we call them on the prairies, can go on your land. They can go in your granary. They can get your tax records, your farming records, without your permission or with your permission. So that is in this contract. The other issue, in the, or other clause states this, that if a farmer happens to commit some violation of this contract, it, Monsanto can make him burn his crop, take all the profits from his crop, and the farmer is not allowed to speak to anyone what Monsanto has done to them. And that really bothers me because Monsanto has always said there's only a few farmers in North America that have really been, uh, that we have really gone after. How do we know when a farmer has to sign his freedom of speech away? So your freedom of speech, your freedom of expression also is taken away. Another clause now in the 2008 was this, if something is wrong with the seed that you purchased from Monsanto or something went wrong with the crop and it's the company's fault, 
you can never ever take Monsanto to court for damages. So you even give your right up on, uh, to take Monsanto to court. So those are some of the principal um, clauses in this contract. It does not matter now if you, are if you sign this contract or not. If you are contaminated against your wishes, you fall under the same condition under patent law as if you signed the contract. So, and the other part of that now is that if a farmer opens up a bag of seed on the, on the, this is exactly what's on the side of the bag of seed, is this notice. And it states this, by opening up this bag of seed, you agree to all the terms and conditions of Monsanto's patent number or under so and so and so. So even by opening a bag of seed, you agree to all of Monsanto's terms and conditions. Now the other issue that I'm very concerned about, and I think it's one of the most important ones uh, that Monsanto has come out with, and as a former politician, I think this is the worst one that could ever have, they could have brought out. I have a brochure from Monsanto, and in, and, and in the United States, it even advertised this on the radio. It states here, if you think your neighbor is growing Monsanto's GMOs without a license, you should report Monsanto, uh, you should report your neighbor to Monsanto. And if a farmer happens to do that to his neighbor for whatever reason, he gets a free gift from Monsanto. Normally, it's a free leather jacket in Western Canada or chemicals. Believe me, there's not many farmers wearing Monsanto's jackets in Western Canada. But what happens is this. When Monsanto gets this tipper rumor, they immediately send two. I've always been told two by farmers that had these visits. And they can be either Monsanto's police or Monsanto's own investigators. And they'll come to a farmer's home and they'll say to a farmer, we have this tip or rumor, you're growing Monsanto's GMOs without a license. But first of all, even before they say that, we are ex-RCMP. The police force that Monsanto has are former Royal Canadian Mounted Police Officers. And they'll always say we're ex-RCMP. And a lot of times, the farmers don't hear the ex.